um, show 29 minutes after seven. Let's get on to our conversation. We've talked about this all morning. Uh, I've been talking to Roland Walker about it. There are still lots of questions to be asked, and that's why it's appropriate to bring uh, Mr. Boniface Abubakar Sadiq, who's the minister designate for inner city and Zongo development. We'll put a question on Facebook. It's Joy News on TV. Lots of you are responding to it as well. We'll pull that in the course of the conversation. And if you remember, last week, Roland went to Fadama and wanted to find out, because that's a typical Zongo community, wanted to find out uh, what was on their priority list. We'll bring you a playback of that as well. Uh, but let me just say good morning to the Member of Parliament, also for Medina. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. It's like a double congratulations to your triple. Thank you. Mm. How has it been? Um, <clears throat> it's not been easy in a way. But at the end of the Already? day... Already? Yeah. First of all, coming through a hard campaign, mm. it wasn't easy uh, defeating my senior brother, uh, Amadou Sorogo, yeah. who tagged himself Medina for Sorogo and Sorogo for Medina. So you see, having that tag will not be easy. And so it was a hard fight. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's hard work and determination. You know, I, I, I drove past uh, the, over, the overhead bridge uh, at the Zong is it Zongo Junction. Mm. And I realized your billboard was really small. Now yes, I wonder, that tells you in the next four years, would it, it be bigger? Da it was David and Goliath. <laughs> would it be bigger no, 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 no. <laughs> in 2020? I believe everything of my in humility. Mm. It's about sending the message. It's not about the size. Uh, our locals have an old adage that it's not the size of a yam that, that makes fufu, but the type. Yeah. So that is how it is. Mm. Uh, but the work ahead is big, Very even big. with this new ministry, uh, this new portfolio, mm. inner mm. city and Zongo yeah. uh, development. What's your understanding of this role? Well, uh, it's a new ministry. We are here to evolve, I mean, a tentative concept. But my understanding of the inner city and the Zongo development uh, cuts across will give us, uh, first of all, thinking about education, training, conscientization of the people. We are also talking about uh, infrastructure. We're talking about health and sanitation. You're talking about business development, centers of culture and arts. You are talking of policing. You are talking of security. And you are looking at a way how best you can bridge the community Zungu with the mainstream communities. Mm. So what we should be thinking about, you see, some people are quite, excuse me to say, quite myopic in thinking about inner cities and Zungu development. Mm -hmm. The orthodox definition of Zungu is not what His Excellency is thinking about current Zungu. The orthodox definition of Zungu means transit, temporal residence. It's, uh, I mean, in Hausa, when you say Zungu, Zungu means let's have a temporal residence maybe about a week, two weeks, or a month, then we leave. Because originally, our great-grandfathers who came were traders. And so it means let's, put, let's settle a uh, distance away from the main town. Mm. And so most of the Zongos in the past were outside or outskirts of town. And we also let people understand Zongos are not strangers. Okay. The Zongos were among the first people who were used to attain independence for this country. We have to get it clear. The first 600 soldiers or policemen who were enlisted, you go to the military academy, is there. Global 600. These were Zongo people. The national chief imam, our current national chief imam, Dr. Nu Sharugutu, his grandfather was one of the enlisted soldiers of this country. They fought for independence for Ghana. But unfortunately, people don't actually go deep to understand the history of this country. It was the same Zongos 
who also played a vital role in fighting for independence. Mm. And that is how come they evolved the party. It used to be a pressure group called the Muslim Association Movement. Later became the Muslim Association Party, mm. led by people like Ahmadu Baba, Baba Lada, Muntawakil, uh, Churuma, and Co. You see, so, but the modern Zongo tells you that it is a composition of Christians, Muslims, accounts, uh, houses, yeah, and the rest. Is. Because, and let me let, let people understand who a Zungu person is. You get a northerner, a Muslim, but he's not a Zungu person. You get an Akan, Christian, but he's a Zungu person. I'll come and explain that to you better. The point is that if you go to Nima right now, mm -hmm. or you go to Fadama, you get an Ashanti, Christian. You listen, the way he speaks Hausa, you will never know where he's coming from. His lifestyle, his socialization, everything is just a typical Zungu person. You have somebody who is a Muslim, a Northerner, but cannot speak Hausa, his socialization is different. And today, when you, it's only Ghana that exhibits that type of lifestyle. You go to Zungus today, you have a church sharing border with a mosque, and they live in harmony, in peace. But when you go into Zungu deep, there are a whole lot of things that need to be corrected. Okay, so I understand that you, you've done some research. There are about 500 Zungus in Ghana, correct? Exactly. In okay. 2008, it was 365. But if you take a margin of error, plus or minus 5%, it brings you to about 500. Okay. So, so typically, what are we going to see? Are you evacuating these people from these areas? It can never be done. You are not evacuating them. The most important thing is that we've, um, I've just spelled out a few things. First of all, we need to look at the Zungus based on their settlements. There are areas where you might have to talk to them when I'm talking about sanitation and health. You need to collaborate with other ministries. Now, in terms of the infrastructure, let's look at it critically. You go to Zungus, with, you have a lot of slums in those areas. Mm -hmm. It is our duty, responsibility, to ensure that we clear the place, we ensure that the place is very neat for the people to survive. You know, when we say clearing the place, are you, is it not keeping clearing, the place not as clearing the not community. moving them? No, okay. we're not going to move them. If, for example, the, you go to most of the Zungus, they have untied roads. So most, it is a hazard, health hazard to them, dust. So all the time, either malaria or Qatar, you know, the, 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 the rate of sickness since that we have there is very high as compared to the major residential areas. Mm. So it is very, very important that we tackle all these problems. They don't have drains. You go to a place like uh, Medina right now, and you go to the main Zongu, you realize that we have big, big gully erosions, gutters, that is eating into people's houses, but nobody's looking at it. Why? If it had been in the main residential area, fast, we'll go there. But, you see, and it also creates danger for the nation. Because the other people living down the stream will begin to look at the top. And it creates some kind of anxiety. And so it is very important that when you uplift them a little, you are able to secure the gutters for them, closed gutters. That will help raise the livelihood of the people mm. in the area. I, I wonder yeah. though, because if there yeah. are no drains in certain areas, yes. how are you going to, because the place is already developed, mm. there are structures there mm. already, how are you then going to build the drains, make provision for such things, yeah, good. unless you pull down that some of the structures? Definitely, that is why I said there should be conscientization, education. We need to move to talk to the people. Like I often see, America was built by Americans. Japan by Japanese, Ghana by Ghanaians. And if you want Zungu to develop, you must get a Zungu product. Who will be the best person to talk to them, draw their attention. Once you explain to them and they get the concept very well, 
there will be people who will come out and even sacrifice and say, look, I can see that this layout will pass through my house. I'm prepared for so long as you compensate me and relocate me. This will bring sanity in the whole area. But so if you take it in a revolutionary way mm -hmm. and say, look, I have to develop Zongu, and you go in with force, you might not achieve your purpose. So you're hoping that by talking to them, some of them would volunteer to leave and, and so that you, you can build the place. I mean, what's the plan? Some of them leave, and then what? They don't leave. You relocate. As them. in relocate. And yes. then what happens to, to the place? You develop the place. And they come back and live there? If you've used the fellow's road as a uh, uh, house as a road, how? How does he come to live there? You have already relocated and acquired a better place for him. He's okay with life. The most important thing is to get a better accommodation. He's not mo being moved away from his roots. Okay, maybe within the same place you can get a place and acquire for him, or you move him away from that place. And then once he's satisfied, because it mu life must be a two-way street. You are not going to use force. You must come to a consensus mm. and be able to convince the fellow. He must be well convinced, so that it doesn't become some kind of a uh, terminal litigation. No, you must come to a better consensus. So let me, let me get a better understanding. All these 500 Zongos, mm. are, are you taking a look at them to see those that need to be restructured or from all these 500, people might, must, must certainly relocate? Uh, first of all, you are not going to do it, say I'm taking off on all the 500 communities. Okay. That will be dangerous. You achieve nothing. You must start for any projects. You must first start with a few, but the message must go so that it trickles down. Because for now, it's just the concept that is being built. You are yet to have, for a whole ministry, the, organo the organo uh, organogram. You must come out with the goals and objectives. You must come out with a full concept. You must departmentalize the whole ministry. You are talking of maybe religions department you are talking when we talk of religion because sometimes when you mention zongu people think of islam and northness but that is not it you go to medina today you have ch more than 400 churches during my campaign the churches i was able to go was 400 but yet there were some churches i couldn't go so in medina you can have about 500 to 600 churches the same thing you go around there are a lot of mosques around so these are things, and it is only Ghana that you have a very serene, harmonious, I mean, relationship between Christians and Muslims. Churches and mosques sharing almost the same apartments. Mm. That tells you the type of life we live in in Ghana. So are you starting from home? Definitely. Life begins at home. Okay. I'm a Ma Madina boy. So if I have to start something, I must start the, the experiment. If it doesn't work, I don't replicate it. You see how it is. You go to Kumasi. I was brought up in Kumasi, Abuabu. I'm a Abuabu boy. They know it very well. You know, and that's why uh, people thought I was going to contest in Asawasi. I could have contested, but my choice is that I lived in Madina. Perhaps that was going to be tougher. No. My junior brother knows. But it's better for him to stay there and also stay here. And that's why I chose to stay here. So I take it that Medina and Aswasi will be the two places that you begin. Um, you see, if you want to talk really, Zungu itself, we have two Zungus in this country. The real roots of Zungu is Salaga and Gambaga. Gambaga collapsed and Salaga survived. Salaga and Krachi are twin brothers. Salaga gave birth to Prime, Atebubu, Kwame Dansu, Kaswa, and then Kumasi. Then it moved on to Kofudia. This is how it began. I know Salaga has a very good history because that is the oldest and the largest slave market in West Africa. And so in those days, per the history, the oral history, and what I have read told us that each week, we got not less than 300,000 people entering and leaving Salaga. And Salaga has the largest number 
of wells, I mean, uh, uh, boreholes in, in this country. But unfortunately, they are still uh, crying for water. So you see, these are some of the areas. Now in Ghana, there's no town that you go and you don't find a zongo. It is so, very so important. Salaga, and, I, mm. I'm trying to figure out the places where you're going to begin. Mm. And I, I, I've taken Medina, uh, Aswase, mm. Salaga. Yeah. Kofudia is part of it. Okay. I'm going to spread it because the thing, the, the, this exercise is going to take me the whole country. You are not just going to say, oh, I'm picking this, this towns because they are popular. No. You must be able to fish out even the smallest zungu in this country so that we can begin to tell them especially having a better layout for each settlement. So what would we see? Schools, clinics? Good. You see, in terms of schools, a lot of people we need to upgrade the schools in Zungus. People, especially when it comes to teachers, a lot of teachers when posted to Zungus Dungu because they fear the people there and the way they relate to them. And so the performances in most of the Zungu schools is always very low. It is our intention to ensure that we get teachers that will motivate them, give them better incentives, so that they will be e ever prepared to go and then teach. Whilst they begin to teach and impact the real knowledge to the, ch to the children, as they come up, they will put up good performance. So you can now relate. Zungu people will not take their children outside Zungu for education. People in the residential area will now feel that, oh, the, 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 the system in Zungu has improved. Their children are now getting better grades. Teaching is going on well. Somebody in the residential area will want his child to go to Zungu school and also be abreast with the Zungu type of life. You know, so it is very, very important. The schools must be upgraded. They should get good structures. If we go around the whole Zungus in Ghana and you see the type of schools there, you will not love it. You will like it. And so, so you see. So your so plan would be to upgrade the schools. Schools in the in the will be part of it. Okay. So it means there will be uh, intersectoral collaboration with Ministry of Education. Almost everything I'm talking about, there will be a lot of uh, interministerial and sectoral collaboration and coordination. If you are talking of sanitation, you're talking to Ministry of Water and Sanitation. You see how it is. If we are talking of education, we need to collaborate with Ministry of Education. If it comes to uh, uh, infrastructure in terms of drain, I need to be talking to Minister of Water, uh, water uh, Sanitation and Water, Minister of Local Government, Minister of Rules and Highways. How about business the development? Site. What's the plan? Yeah, business development, first of all, fortunately we have a minister on business development. Now, uh, we need to encourage our people. Most of our people are traders, but the question of managing their resources is a problem. Some people to have good ideas. They have good business plans, but don't have the support. It is our responsibility to check and get genuine ones and give them the necessary support in terms of finance, in terms of education, all these things, in terms of molding and building and giving them proper business plans to carry out. These are things that we should be looking at, which will play a very vital role. And at the same time, we must also have centers of culture and arts because they have zungus have a rich culture but so far we haven't done anything about it and i believe when we collaborate with ministry of uh, uh, tourism we'll be able to unearth all these things and it will also help in revenue generation for this country i think uh, uh, tourism is the third highest earning uh, foreign exchange for this country so and we have most many, many, many opportunities which we are not capitalizing and utilizing. Mm. You know, there's a general perception about Zungos and the people that live there. Mm. Uh, it's either what? you think they are a bit rough, mm -hmm. they, they don't understand things the way that you intend them mm -hmm. to. People generally don't even like to either drive through if they can avoid mm. uh, because they feel that they are, they are a bit rough. Well, is there a plan to get people to think differently of, of people uh, who live in no, There is no art to find the mind's construction on the face. But you look at me, do I look violent? I'm a Zongo boy. 
I was born, bred, and brought up in Zungu. It tastes the perception. And because of that, Zungus have been alienated. And that is why development hasn't gone there. And politicians have always used Zungus as instruments of production, as catalysts. They use them for violent purposes. At the end of the day, when they finish and they achieve their purpose for the politicians, then they dump them. So definitely, there will, be, there will be some kind of inbuilt emotions. So at the end of the day, when they begin to vo uh, bring out their anger, then people see them as violent. Two, let's say in terms of education, this is exactly what I was talking about. If they don't have the same kind of education that happens in the mainstream, and now they are seeing their colleagues, their age needs are certain positions, definitely they, they will build some anger in them. And if they have no jobs, no work, what will happen? The devil will always have jobs for the idle hands. And I can tell you, there are a whole lot of things that you can address that will help change the people in the Zungus. They are not violent. As far as I'm concerned, Zungu people are not violent, but they feel that you cannot use them and dump them. This is the problem. And I believe that His Excellency the President has thought through it. It's not just to satisfy uh, the manifesto wish. It is very important, something that must be eternal. If you introduce this, we must have genuine people to handle that sector, which is very important. Do you honestly think that this is going to work? Well, I believe that as far as I'm concerned, I have been challenged. And I'm an achiever. I won't hide it. Right from day one, you can check from my background. I have served in President Kufo's government, and I'm always grateful, grateful to him for making me what I am today. Because in the first place, he was the one who identified me when I came to parliament as an independent person, chose me, and challenged me first to Minister of Trade, then to Minister of Tourism as Deputy Minister. The third one was Northern Regional Minister. When people were being called and being asked to go to Northern Region, they couldn't. They didn't want to hear the name Northern Region because of the crisis there. At that time, the crisis of Dagbon was at its peak. I was then a very young man. I was taken there. I accepted the challenge, ended up in Berin Yana, bringing peace. I installed the regent who is still there today. I was challenged again in Ministry of Manpower Youth and Employment. I ruled out youth employment. When people were saying it was job for the boys, now it has come to stay. You see how it is. During my time in Ministry of Manpower Youth and Employment, there was no strike in this country for one and a half years. I ensured things went as it was expected. Finally, I was challenged to Ministry of Works and Housing. People saw what I did. I do my job not thinking of the monetary aspect of it. I want to vindicate whoever has chosen me and put me in a place. So, and I believe choosing me and making me the minister for uh, inner cities and Zongus, you are challenging me. That is what I'm saying. No prophet, a different person has never been chosen for a people as a prophet. They will always choose you from your own people. Mm. So if I've been chosen, to go and lead my people and change their communities. I'm very optimistic that they will give me all the necessary support. And at the end of the day, together we'll achieve our goals. There are obstacles and challenges with, with every, uh, every every cause. Even where you have an take. asphalt road, you always have potholes. So we'll come back and talk about uh, challenges. Yeah. I also want a bit of education on inner cities, mm -hmm. what constitutes inner cities. Right. And I've got a classic case of a shaman and I wonder where that will fall mm. uh, and so we'll come back and deal with that but I want us to play back a conversation that my colleague Roland had uh, with some persons who are living uh, in, in a Zongo community in Accra Fadama and this was a live uh, program that we carried right here on the AM show I want us to watch this really I think um, everything has been written over here what what you want I think everything has been written over okay. here it's just that I want to touch a little bit on it that is it okay so you would have written sanitation? Exactly. And then you need something in your pocket? Yeah, we need it. But we need the ways to make the money, not just putting the money in the pocket. There's no way we can put money in, the, in our pocket. 
but it's about the means to get the money. So what the politicians say, creating the enabling environment? Uh, creating enabling environment. Um, creating an enabling environment. Okay. You know, creating an enabling environment, I think um, they're, made, they're saying something. You know, they're saying something. But you see, with sanitation, we really need it. As we are standing here now, you can feel or you can hear this. You can, you can smell what is happening over here. Mm. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not um, conducive to be around here. Okay, because of the order of the... Bad order. Okay. Very bad one. Following from exactly. the, 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 the littering of the... The cameraman can just um, zoom it and see it, you see. And also money. Not just putting money in the pocket, that's but rather... And so that's why we have money there. Exactly. Also free education. You know, he spoke about it the last time, and we believe he can do it. And um, with uh, Nana Abdo Dankwa Akufu Ado, you know, as the new sworn in president of Ghana, we believe he, he, can, he, can, he can do whatever he said. You understand? Um, 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 I want to touch also on um, the Islamic education. Islamic education. Exactly. Islamic education. Islamic education yeah. So, 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 let me, so let me yeah, you, you can put it here, but put this one, you can put it here as well. So, Abdul Rahman is putting as a fifth point Islamic education. And I would want to ask him why this is critical. And uh, we know that uh, learning about the Quran and the issues involving Islam is critical. Why do you think that Islamic education will be critical for uh, children of school-going age in Muslim community? You see, when you, um, when you, get, to, um, when you get to our Arabic schools or our Makaran you know, as, as usual, um, you know, you see them learning all right. Mm. They have teachers, they have everybody, mm. right? What I, the comparison I want to make now is when you go to the secular education, when you get to the secular education, from um, nursery or from um, year one to year six, your child is able to speak the language. Your child is able to write the language. Your child understand the language, understands the language to edify those who do not understand. And uh, you came to write, which one did you come to write? Quality health. Quality health. Yeah. Um, why did you write quality health? You, you found something wrong? Yeah, I found something very wrong. Because the Zongo community itself, it's a very large community as a whole. And we need much um, good health facilities. Like, cause Are the hospitals that bad? Yeah, I don't think the hospitals had those facilities that can help the whole of Zongo community. So I think we need much facilities. Mm. Yes. And, uh, th that's interesting. It, but we have national health insurance and people have to use alternatively those means of accessing health. Um, is it that you want the health um, hospitals or the facilities in the Zungu communities to be up to the standard or scratch of the ordinary hospitals we have? Yeah, I think the Zungu hospitals have to use the national health insurance because this time around, I don't think the national health insurance is even working. So I want it to improve much better so that you can use it whenever and wherever you visit the health facility. So our community, there's no job here. Boys, boys, boys here, they, they don't have jobs, they don't have anything. And the way we, they are growing, anytime they are thousand years, giving money, giving money. If you see Alaji, Alaji giving money. Alaji, and Alaji too don't have money. Alaji is not working. I think you understand. That is why we are bringing up money. And the money to, money rule the world, and God rule every. If you don't have money, you don't have power. That is why we are, we, are, we are talking of money, money, money. If you don't have money, if they, they say they are voting for you, nobody will vote for you. Well, if you have money, you can vote for Zuzu as you can vote for Zuzu as well. Nanado, he don't have money. But we see the way he's coming. We like it like that. We need to come. Because the way he's creating job, is creating Zuzu as well. We vote for him. We need to come for a For we to get job to do. So before you get money, you want the environment to be created, the atmosphere to be created, there will be jobs so that people will have access uh, to money. Yeah, yeah. All right, this is when uh, Roland Ten. Uh, some parts close to the chief imam's residence into a classroom with a blackboard and chalk for people to write their concerns uh, and they've outlined and explained some of them. Uh, we've also put uh, the issue of Mr. Boniface Abubakar coming to our studio on Facebook and some people are also asking him a lot of questions. So we'll add a few of that to the concerns already raised. 
Joshua Freeman Osa Osato says, my question for Mr. Boniface is how he's going to address Zongo communities that have water problem, as water is the basic need in life. Okay, we're just going to cut it short. The import is, is there. Anthony Agler says, what's the vision of the prospective minister for this ministry? Are we to expect that the Zongos and other inner city areas uh, like them will be transformed from the slums they are today to modernized residential areas comparable to cantonments, Laboni, Isligon, and airport residential areas. Uh, that's pressure. Uh, Hakim says, all there is to know how young enterprising guys like me would get facilities that would support our initiatives. Nonetheless, Honorable God, all it takes to execute that, I believe. Samuel Kofi says, this really shows that Nanado is really good in terms of governance. Uh, Kweku Abeko says, are they going to pull the slums and build better apartments with good drainage systems? If so, how will the allocation be in the Zongo? The population in households are huge. Evan says, is he going to demolish all the slums and build, in, and build apartments as promised before? Mohammed, uh, Mahamud Habib says, this is really a call in the right direction. Uh, Adamu Mubarak says, good initiative, but I'd like him to advise our leaders in the communities to not put pressure on him to divert funds for the project to send them to Hajj. Uh, that's my mm -hmm. appeal. Idris Wamadu says, will there be an educational scholarship for brilliant but needy students who would like to further their Western and Arabic education? Ronald Ni Amahamon says, why that appointment and what's the way forward to development in the Zungo communities? Flex says, what are his plans for that sector? Medium to long term, I wish him well. Oscar says, ask him, what plans uh, has he got to, to have other societies like Christians and traditional people? Okay, I'm not sure I get this, but uh, most of the questions, you know, kind of repeating themselves. So first of all, can you just address this again? Would we have apartment? Would we have the places look at like cantonment? Somebody's put it cantonment no. Laboni Airport to be, Residential. We need, be, we need to be honest <laughs> with ourselves. This is not what we intend to do. Pulling down houses and building uh, high street fairs. No. Mm. First of all, education must take place. We must tell them, sell to them the ideas why the president is creating the ministry. Uh, first of all, if you're talking about a housing scheme, if we need to be honest with ourselves, there must be proper layouts in all the Zongo communities. You go to a place like Medina, the layout is perfect. This can be replicated in to, uh, most of the places where they have to, in the, you setting up in the Zongo community must follow so that you can have easy access. There are parts in some parts of Zungu, Zungus in uh, Greater Accra. Sometimes I fear for myself in case of any fire outbreak because you cannot have access into those areas. I won't mention the names, but they know. You see how it is. So it is very, very important that we are able to show all the things. We are not just coming like we're talking about uh, Zungu Development Fund. We are not coming to see line up and then I begin distributing money. Like the gentleman said, I shouldn't divert money into Hajj. Hajj, you don't go and tell people, come, I'll pay for you. No, it's your intent. This is the misconception. Is that to say you're not flying people? No, it is not my oh, duty yeah. to fly. If I have money, my personal money, and I want to send it to Mecca, that is a different thing. But I'm not going to use government resources to say, hey, you Zungu people, get ready. I'm taking you to Mecca so that when you come, you vote for my government. This is not what we are coming to do. If that fellow has that con perception, then I'm telling him that he should forget it. That is not benefit for you. I'm not going to divert government resources for such a thing. Uh, it is very, very important that we realize. For example, within the Zungu communities, I heard somebody asking about these uh, Islamic teachers and other things. I introduced that model and the voluntary service where Islamic instructors were, to, were being paid. Go and check. Immediately, our administration came to an end. They scraped off that term. It was at the tail end of NDC's administration, and they were trying to bring that thing up because the people were complaining. You see, sightings, you don't take ad hoc decisions 
to achieve your aim. When you do that, you will never achieve it. So those things, for example, we are talking of enhancing education. Definitely, such people will have to be considered. Islamic instructors, teachers, you motivate them, then they give out their best. Mm. This is what you do. But you don't take ad hoc decisions. And whatever we're going to do, it has to, we have to look at the short term, medium term, and long term gains of the mm. ministry. So Hajj is not your business? Hajj falls under the ministry. You, earlier I mentioned religions. It falls under the ministry. Uh, Zungu Development Fund. Under your fall. ministry? Yes, it has to fall under that ministry. Mm. If you are talking about Zungus, all those things will fall under it. Okay. And you are talking of monitoring and evaluation. You are talking about research and development. Because if you don't have all these things there, then what are you going to do? But it shouldn't but be, and the and ministry and should not be one office. Uh, but when you are starting something, you begin from a very small base. But if you're not going to fly people mm. to, to Hajj, then yeah. why bother about Hajj? The conception, please get this uh, uh, message well, that I should not divert government resources to send people to Hajj. It means some people ever did it. By sending people Hajj free, like a zakat, we don't do that. It falls under the ministry. Yes, whatever the ministry has to do to enhance a smooth Hajj pilgrimage performance, the ministry will do it. The government will do it. But the government is not coming out with money as arms or and say, oh, you can pass, it's free. This is the perception. You know, for every language, there's some kind of ambiguity in it. That question that was placed, this was what he meant. And I want to tell him that Boniface doesn't do that. And Boniface is not coming to do such a thing. The, the, just quickly, the concerns that were raised mm. in that insert that we played back, mm. uh, money yes, in, in people's exactly. pocket, yeah, people yeah. feeling the money, mm. uh, sanitation, health. Somebody talked about building uh, uh, hospitals. Yeah. Do these concerns, I mean, are they the same concerns that you also have, Absolutely. having lived there? I think if you had me right from the uh, outset, I did mention things like education and training. I mentioned infrastructure. We're talking about health. We're talking about sanitation. I was talking about business development and support, centers for art, culture and arts. I was talking about policing. I was talking about security. I was talking about how best we can help the youth gain, have gainful employment. This is what suppresses social vices in the system. Mm. And you also boost the economy. Because once they get job, they will contribute to paying their taxes, contribute their quota to the development of the country. But and at the same time, mm -hmm. it's very, very important that as we help upgrade and give them better education, they will now feel that they are also part of the system mm. and will work hard. They see their colleagues and to be a challenge to them. Mr. Sadiq, you're going to be operating from the office of the president. Sure. Uh, you don't have your own ministry building. No. Uh, you will not have your own allocation. No. How are you going to be able to execute all these brilliant ideas that you have? I, I listened to a minister mm. who also worked from the office of the president right. in the previous administration. Mm. Yeah. And, and he said that it gets very challenging and you have to be very creative because whatever you outline must be approved by somebody else to give you the funds to be able to do what you want to do? Well, me, I'm the open type. I'm not so much interested in money, but once I give you the concept and I draw the budget for you, if you give me, I work. If you don't give me, I sit down. Because the most important thing is that you have challenged me. But how do we progress I'm then? I'm coming. If, if you have challenged me. I bring up the concept. But I'm in the office of the president because this is the beginning. The ministry is just being set up. You need to come up with the concept. You don't see because the president has just said, I've created the Ministry of uh, Inner City and Zungu Development. This is the building. You don't even have the building. You don't have the structure. But you must, first of all, have it on, bo on the board. Come out with the concept. The departments you'll be creating. The number of people you need to start the job. You don't immediately say, oh, Ministry of Roads and Highways has about 1,000 people in the ministry, so you also need 1,000 people. No, it's not job for the people. You have to start from a very humble base 
and then maybe it will take you six months or even a year for your concept to be accepted, which has to be discussed, and then see what will be the coordination, what will be the uh, intersectoral uh, collaboration with other ministries, so that it doesn't create too much uh, struggle for a TEF, doesn't create some kind of antagonism between one ministry and the other ministry, these are things that you need to consider. When should we Which begin to measure your work and begin to tick the box because you've outlined a number of things today? First of all, I've not been vetted. It's just in the air that I've been appointed, a nominated rather, for the appointments committee and parliament to consider. If they consider me and the president approves me, which, it which then, will happen? Then we'll be talking about maybe six months going because this is the time I have to start to build a very small sizable number of people, consultants to sit down and then we brainstorm, come out with, I mean, a very brilliant concept. Then we place it before. We have to go out, reach to the stakeholders, invite them to stakeholders meeting, and then we'll do a proper discussion, then come back, validate it, and present it to the presidency. If it is accepted by the president, the president can now say, okay, I now agree this is the way I want to do it. Mm. Then you can raise a budget. If you don't have anything in mind, you can raise a budget. Okay, so after six months when you settle, we can begin to can begin look to, at you critically yeah, exactly. and what you're doing. And ask me, what are you doing? We okay. have approved you six months ago. So what is happening in the ministry? But if you don't get the funds to execute the project, would you also be honest to tell us? Oh, yes. Uh -uh. I'm not a Ghanaian. Me, I'm a Muslim. I swore by the Quran to serve this country. When I went to parliament, the speaker was swearing in as in, I held the Quran. And I would never tell any lie. But you're also working for a government. You're, you're not working in isolation. So sometimes you, may, you may decide not to lie, but just keep quiet. No, the point is that silence means what? If I, do, if I keep quiet, it tells you that I don't have the money. Even if I don't open my mouth, you journalists, so if we, called you, if we called you and you said no comments, I'll it means that you don't have the cash. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is clear. Because media men, if I say there's cash, you go around and find out that there's no cash. <laughs> so it's better to tell you the truth that, oh, we are yet fighting for the cash. Okay. So you understand that there's no cash. Just in wrapping up, I wanted yes. to know the inner city. What's the inner city? Well, the inner city uh, will be looking at I mean, both the residential areas. You see, sometimes you all of a sudden see a business or businesses shooting up in the residential areas, and they are not located at the right spots. It's very important for us to see this is a residential area. This spot, you are not supposed to put a kiosk there. You are not supposed to put up any container shop there. You have to be relocated. Maybe you some road has been constructed which is wrong or there's a drain we need this time around to say look we need covered drains we don't need open drains in those areas two take places like ashama take places like choko and most slum areas it is our duty to ensure that all these areas are brought up to standard because they are in the city so this so is like some very, kind very of important. realignment exactly it's very very important that we look at all those things a shaman qualifies to be called Zongo? A shaman? Uh, yes. Okay. A shaman qualifies. Because if you go to a shaman, the Zongo community in a shaman has eclipsed, consumed the whole guns and gun Adangwe people there. So a shaman qualifies to be a Zongo. Mm. All right. Mm. Uh, so I'll place before you <laughs> the Zongos. Yeah. But let me pass one comment. A gentleman was talking about some water system and that I was minister for water resources and I could Oh, you read the rest of the message. I want to tell him that <laughs> he's not a smart guy. He should go to Ministry of Western Housing and check whether I never came out with a project proposal. We're going in for a loan, $20 million for Salaga water. And when I was in Salaga, there was no water crisis. He should go and check. Okay. Me, I don't play my politics by aligning or trying to destroy people. He should tell the truth. Your mama never failed the people. The pre most important thing is that is the minister who has to have a vision and say, look, these are projects that I think is good for Greater Accra. 
I drink kotoku. I mean, you should go and check uh, uh, Agbogbulushi. Or they used to call it Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm. I was the man in charge of it, the Kleth project. We're supposed to move them from that place to Ajim Kutoku. You would, by our concept, you wouldn't have seen heavy duty trucks in the cities. All trucks will have ended up at Ajim Kutoku. Mm. All the trains will end up there. All the goods will, will great, create another job hey. for smaller trucks to cut the goods into town. So you see, MPP, we are always creative. We want jobs. Mr. Mr. Sadiq, we need a part two of this conversation, <laughs> maybe after the vetting, Thank when you are settled properly. Thank you. But I really appreciate your time. Thank you for coming through. We, we wish you well, really. All the best. Yeah, right. Roland is, is from Islam, mm. now qualifies as Zongo. Oh, yeah, it's so not a Zongo it is, boy like uh, yeah. we are It's my wish Zongo. that his area will be my seriously developed. I apologize for my voice. Today, my voice is no good. Oh, it sounds, I have some Qatar. It sounds well. Good. So good. we wish you well. Thank you. Uh, but uh, from one conversation to the other, we've got to cross over to Kumasi. Erastos Asari Donko joins us live from Kumasi. The burial rites of the late Nana Efia Kobi Sewa Ampem the second starts today. And Kumasi is really busy with lots of activities. Erastos, good morning. Hello, Erastos. Yeah, good morning. You'll be in all black. Yeah, good morning. Uh, this is the official uh, club for the funeral, as you can see. You have to pass me some two yards so I can sew a dress before Thursday. Uh, no, no, no problem. If you can come to Mejia now, <laughs> I'll give you a yard. <laughs> uh, Arasta, tell us what's happening there right now. Hello, Erastos. If you can hear me clearly, tell us what's happening. Where are you and what's happening? Okay, uh, Erastos, seem, uh, he can't hear me properly, but we're definitely going to reestablish contact with Erastos Asari Donko. Uh, but we're bringing you pictures uh, from, I believe, the Menshia Palace. We know that the funeral rites begin today, Monday. Uh, we will leave you with the visuals for now. Erastos will join us uh, when we can reestablish contact. Roland Walker will be on your screens right after Erastos Asari Donko. You're this watching the AM show. Please stay with us. The view behind me is the exit uh, point for people who are paying their last respect uh, in the palace there. Behind me is where uh, Nana Hema, Nana Esia Kobisa, one fifty second, has been laid in state and people are filing past. And in fact, I can tell you it is um, strictly by assets. If you have assets, then definitely... Appreciate <laughs> that. Oh, wow. That Let's do the interview and record so that we'll stay back for them.